Hey everybody, this is Michael Gabriel and you're watching CMS TV. So that was that. And then um, last night I went out, me, believe it or not, I ventured ventured out. My posse, we did our annual pilgrimage to the Dave to the Dave Landau show. Yeah, how how is Dave? He's good. You know, we um we uh he A, I can't thank him enough for the hookup. What a hookup he hooked up. You know, we it was at Hilarities where we saw Chris Porter at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But instead of those little shitty tables that we sat at. We got those the the nice like couch area there right oh, yeah. behind it. You got the booth. Yeah, we got like the booth couch, and uh -huh. it, sure. it was really not. It was a nice setup, and thank God we didn't have the little tables because Dave was just destroying everybody that was at the tables. So I was super glad that we were not up front. <laughs> <laughs> what, what What do you mean he was destroying? Them? Oh, he was I'm just like, picking out people and oh, making, making jokes and stuff. He literally went from table to table to table to table all the way around the stage. Yeah. And just hammered on all of them. Wow. Just hammered on them. You know, Oh, are you married? Huh? No, you can't be, you look happy, you know, stuff like <laughs> that. You know, I mean, he was just beating them up. Sure. So I was glad that we were back a little bit away from that. Cause you know, it would have been worse with him knowing me too. He would have beat the living hell out of me. Right. So <laughs> I was plenty happy to be in the back, but, um, yeah, it was a great show. He did mostly new material, which was good. You know, I mean, we go every every time he comes. And um, I would say 80 to 85% of the material was stuff I had not heard before. So that was that was really good. Mm -hmm. And then um, you know, and then after after the show, we we hung out for a little while. And then um once the the people cleared, you know, then we we went up and chatted with Dave for 15, 20 minutes or so and that was it. You know, really, I mean, it was cool. It was fun. Not, not that, uh, not that you couldn't divulge anything, but did he give you any insight in the Crowder thing? Uh, little. A little bit. <laughs> a little <laughs> like bit. I said, not that you could divulge. Yeah, not that, none that I'm going to talk about here, but, uh, yeah, 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 he, uh, he, he told me a thing or two. So, yeah. um, you know, it's all going to shake out the way it shakes out, whichever right. way, you know, bottom line, DaveLandau.com. Whether he's on Crowder or he's not on Crowder, he's always at DaveLandau.com. Right, right. So, does he have any concern that he he'll, he'll be out of a gig? Uh, DaveLandau.com. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There, there, not sure. Not not. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's up in the air at the moment. As you can imagine, he's worried about making money. Yeah, sure, absolutely. He was getting a nice, nice money. Well, knowing, knowing after that, that video that you sent me today about yeah. uh, Kumia having it out with, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Kevin Brennan. Yeah. Kevin Brennan and him just basically flat out divulging that he paid Landau a hundred thousand a year. Yeah. Uh, and Landau left that. So, you know, it's a lot more yeah, considerably <laughs> more than that. So, yeah. So yeah, that's a nice chunk of change to, mm -hmm. to, to make in a year, you know? And it's a hard chunk of change to find as a, as a comic, whose only two things have been, whose only two big successful things have really been Kumia and Crowder. Yeah. So if, if Kumia was paying him a hundred grand and he left Kumia for Crowder, you, you know, that he, you know, probably making double that, if not more, Yeah, you know, he's making at least a hundred and one grand. Exactly. Which is still more than a lot of people. Yeah, true. Absolutely true. But uh yeah, that's that's a that's a hard gig to lose if yeah, you know, if things just don't work out right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he was he was super, super cordial, super cool. Hooked like I said, he hooked us up with great premium tickets. You know, we were in the in the premium section, which was which was very cool. It was just a good night. I mean, it was a good night all around. So now um now does does Dave live in Texas now? I'm not sure where he's living. I know he was home in Detroit this week, 
but that was, I think it was because that's, it was his wife's birthday. Okay. Cause he was supposed to do Seth Williams show on Wednesday, but he couldn't cause it was his wife's birthday. Okay. So I know. And I know he said during the show that he drove in from Detroit. All right. So I'm not sure if he still live. I mean, he probably lives in Texas, but you know, cause if, if, when Crowder's going they're they're in Texas. So right, right. I'm sure he lives there four days a week. He's probably just home until they figure out what's going to happen, I guess. Yeah. Well, I know that, uh, when, you know, when he was doing Kumia, uh, he still lived in Detroit, right? And he spent, you know, lived. Well, in he a- had an apartment in in um, New York too. Right, right. He had an apartment in New York or Jersey or somewhere. And then he, um, and then he had a um, no. He had a remember he used to talk about. It. He had an apartment in Harlem. He was living in Harlem. Yeah. And then, um, but then he would, if he didn't have a comedy weekend, he would fly home. Sure. So. The hell yeah, to live you you know yeah. leave, leave the wife and kid at home and you're out doing your gig during the week and then you know you come home every other week or you know every weekend or what right. arrangement is like wow what a what a what a tough tough way to uh you know have a home life as it were now you say tough way i say it's the best way to keep a marriage going <laughs> well at that point it's just like why bother yeah Oh, well, got a kid now, so I'm kind of stuck. No, I understand that. I get that. But man, just, just, I got uh, to go home now. Gotta, yep. Yeah. Got to go see the wife and the kid. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm out the door. I got got to <laughs> go back and do my gig. Yeah. Glad I was here. Yeah. I'll see you when I see you. <laughs> Thanks for launching the blowjob. I'm out. Right. <laughs> She's just like, well, just keep that money coming. That's right. Just keep that money coming. Sure. That's why the arrangement works. Yeah. <laughs> but to live in Detroit though, of all places. Well, he bangs on that pretty hard in his comedy routine. Oh, I'm sure he does. <laughs> What's not to bang on. Yeah. It's like, ugh. that's like his, his, the one, one of the jokes that he's said repeatedly it's on YouTube. So I don't mind giving it, but he talks about how journey wrote, you know, don't stop believing. And, and it does the whole thing about born and raised in South Detroit. And he's like, but what's the next line? <laughs> Took the midnight train to go anywhere. Exactly. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm out of here. Anywhere is better than being in Detroit. <laughs> yeah. Well, can you blame him? I mean, geez, I, I don't know. I don't know when the last time you were there. I know you're going there for metallic yeah. cash, but mm-hmm. uh, still, it's just like, ugh, what a shithole. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to my Detroit time at all. Well, you know, the, the, the arena or the, the, the stadium you're going to, I've been there, right? I've been there for a, a, a football game. So it's a, it's a really nice place. What is it? Ford field is Ford it? field. Yeah. 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 Well, it's an indoor, you know, it's an indoor arena and it's, it's, you know, pretty good parking right around the area there. And it's a nice, nice arena and everything. So. You know, aside from just the immediate area, if you don't yeah. venture out from there, you'll be okay. <laughs> Dude, I'm driving in for the show. Yeah. I'm going home that night. Right. I'm pretty certain I'm not even going to see Metallica. Yeah, just three hours up, three hours back. And an hour and a half in, in between. <laughs> going to try and time it so that I only get in like 20 minutes before Pantera goes on. Get to my seat, rock out for an hour, leave. Yeah, that's that's dedication right there that you'll you'll spend six hours round trip to see an hour, hour and a half's worth of Pantera. Yeah. Dude, I'm Pantering it up. I'm going three times. Oh, now you got a third time now. I'm going to Pittsburgh. Oh okay. And, and then the next night we're we're driving we're driving over from Pittsburgh to Indy. We're okay. gonna see, we're gonna see it in Indy. That's in July. All right. And then Ford Field. Okay. I'm I'm all in. I, so, I, it's so where, are they, where are they playing in Pittsburgh? Did you say they were playing Star Lake? Up? Oh, okay. All right. Out, out at the, uh, amphitheater. Yeah. All right. Cool. And then, and then whatever amphitheater there is in, right. uh, in it's, Indy, it's uh deer, deer Creek, I think it is, or it used to be called that years ago. Yeah. I don't know if it's called that anymore. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's a hookup through not fest. So it's like, pff, good. Just yep. Tell me where to be the day of the show. I don't, I don't need to know until then. Sure. Absolutely. Well, good. You got, uh, you got something to look forward to on the slate. I got, I got bunches to look forward to on the slate, man. I've got David Ellison next month with the, um, the Kings of thrash 
you know, him and Chris Poland and um, Jeff Young from doing the killing is my business and so far so good. So what in their entirety? So that'll be good. I'm doing that in February. And then I'm going to Queensryche in April. Okay. And then two Panteras in July and another Pantera in November. Well, look at you. I got some shit going on. Yeah, you do. For a guy who uh, <clears throat> basically is, you know, become a homebody you you're venturing out again trying to get back into moving around a little bit here yeah, man. why not why not yeah. if it's available and and you can go why not yeah the biggest the biggest worry i have right now is the, is um the queen's right show because i'm probably somewhere in between there i'm having surgery on my knee okay so i'm like i'm having I'm, i have the doctor's appointment on um uh, bah, 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 uh march 2nd to get to get the assessment and set the date for the it's just going to be a scope i think i don't think it's gonna be like real surgery it's just right. going to be scope in my knee it's arthroscopic surgery yeah pretty much it's they gotta fix a tear in my mcl sure which boy did that fucking suck last night oh just walking like two and a half blocks from because you know how hilarities is but yeah. for people that don't know there's nowhere to, like the hilarities is on a uh, a street that's blocked off like it's it's just walk traffic only so you have to park somewhere else and we had to park i don't know two three but not very far but we parked i don't know two three blocks away i guess and and i'm hobbling like an asshole <laughs> fucking trying to get into this goddamn place <laughs> and i refuse to use crutches and i and i should be on crutches i mean honestly i sh i really should be on crutches but i just refuse and I should have crutched. I didn't. So it wasn't so bad getting in, but getting in fucking tore my knee all to shit. And then, um, you know, getting back, getting back to the car. Oh my God. It took like a half hour. Cause I just couldn't fucking move my goddamn leg without it hurting. So, Hobbling like an asshole. Yeah, I was. I think, I think that should be the, uh, <laughs> the title the, title the of the segment. the segment hobbling like an asshole. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it really was. It, I mean, that was the only downer last night was that my leg was just, I mean, you know how me and John and Steph and Kelly usually get, we usually, usually the comedy show is just the start. And then we're going until two or three in the morning. Sure. You know, we usually find somewhere to go. And last night it was like, finish the show, said hello to Dave. I'm out. I'm going home. So you, you just met, uh, Stephanie up there and, yeah. and they went separate ways. Yep. And I, apart. I was literally home before 11. Wow. Look at you. I literally, and that's kind of night. I like, I like that more and more now that I'm old. I like see a show home by 11. That's right. perfect. Did, did, uh, did Dave do uh, two sets or just a single? He set? was doing two. He was doing yeah. two yesterday, two today. <clears throat> I see. Did you go to the first one or the second? Yeah, I went to first. Yeah. Went to the early show, the seven o'clock. And what kind of a break does he have in between? Uh, I think it's, I think it's seven 30. I think our show started at seven. Maybe it started at seven and it ended about eight 30. And then I think the second show is like nine okay, to like 10 30, something like that. Now did, now, did you have to sit through opening coming? Oh, let me tell you about this. Oh, well, this oh I boy. Know because I remember the opening acts that we saw for Chris Porter and it was just like, oh, okay. Oh boy. The <laughs> opening acts we saw for Chris Porter were Sam Kinison compared to what we had last <laughs> night. First guy. His name was Ryan something or another. I'm going to be honest. I don't know either of these two guys' names. Reason? I don't care. Right. First guy, he's just new. You know, it, I'll, I'll cut him an ounce of slack because it was very clear. He really, he's probably done 20 sets in his life. Sure. And and for sure, this was the biggest night he's ever done playing. Because that room's pretty big. There's probably yeah, that's a good size room. I would say like 300 people or so in that room, maybe. You know, three, four hundred people. I mean, it's a pretty big room. Yeah. And and you could tell he was a little nerved up. And um, you know, he's just, you know, he only has what five minutes or ten minutes or whatever yeah, before the feature. Like five to eight minutes. Yeah, wasn't very long. And he didn't get a lot of laughs, but he got a lot of chuckles. He got a lot of the <laughs> just a little snicker. Yeah, a lot of that. A little snickering. Yeah. 
So he was okay, but he wasn't the worst. The next dude, though, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know what this guy's fucking deal was. I think, and again, I don't know this to be true, but I'm assuming this. I think this guy was stoned out of his mind. Yeah, he may have been. Because he just... He was sort of like a Stephen Wright guy. Okay. Kind of like a depressed sounding dude. Yeah. Like, kind, of a, kind of down mumbly. Yeah. You know? No inflections, uh, no nothing. Except he was very slow with his jokes. He, he, he was getting nothing, not even polite laughs, not <laughs> even, I mean, literally dude, I've never been in a, in a club this quiet. There were moments where literally all you could hear was him breathing. <laughs> and, and what, what, uh, length set did he get? Had to be 25, 30 minutes or really? seven years or something, because it felt like forever. <laughs> right. I mean, it felt so long and literally, literally told one really good joke. One, and I can tell you the joke because tell me the joke. I want to laugh and laugh because when you do one goddamn joke, <laughs> it sticks out. Right. And the joke was he was taught. He was, he was every time he started bombing, he started telling jokes about his dick. And the joke was his dick was like, a, is like a Rubik's cube. And, and it was, um, he said, I forget what it was. He's like, a, you know, it, it gets hard. It only gets hard after a really long time or something like that. And then, and then he, he followed it up with, or, or it, you can, you can make it, you can make it whole in 30 seconds if you're a small Asian child. And I will admit that was a pretty funny fucking line. <laughs> that was a pretty fucking funny line, but it was the only laugh the guy got the whole night. Everything was else. That, was that his closer? No. That was his, I'm bombing. So I, I got to try and tell something even <laughs> just, just something really dirty to, to try and bring people. In. I mean, this was, I mean, I've seen comedians eat their balls before, right? This was other level. There was silence. Like you could hear the waiter on the other side of the room, taking an order. <laughs> That's how quiet it was in the you comedy. You hear a pin drop. You really could. It was quiet. No laughter no talking nothing yeah just people were just like all right be funny come on <laughs> i mean and it 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 was endless i i couldn't believe how long it fucking felt oh it was brutal <laughs> but and dave that, killed though huh dave killed but the worst part about that guy when they introed him they said that he yo know, He's been featured on this, this, and that, and Showtime. And I was like, Showtime? How could Showtime put this guy on? Which makes me think he was really, really stoned. Because his delivery was so goddamn slow and dull. Sure. That he had to, something had to be wrong that he was this bad. <laughs> but whatever it was, it did not work for me or anybody else in the room. Maybe he was better in the second set. Maybe he's better tonight, but he sucked during our set. I mean, just brutal. With TV, be more funny. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Take the more out of it. Just be funny. Any kind of funny. <laughs> I would have been happy. I would have been happy if the other guy came back up instead. The other guy that, that really was struggling, at least he got a few chuckles about his girlfriend or whatever. You know, he was telling some jokes about, you know, some of his jokes were kind of funny. He just didn't have the, he the didn't work. have it all together. Yeah, he didn't have the delivery yet. Yeah. I mean, he was telling some jokes about, you know, dating during the pandemic and stuff like that. And some yeah. of it was kind of funny. It was cutesy funny. Sure. You know, not like dirty funny. It was more like, you know, like one of the jokes he said was something to the effect of, you know, he was embarrassed because even his live-in girlfriend moved out of her out of his parents' house before he did. You know, shit like that. There's a, you know, cutesy funny, not like right, right. ha 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 ha. Oh my god, I'm I'm dying here funny. Right. And and that guy might get it together because he does have some material. He just has to figure out the 
the way to tell it. Yeah, he's got a he's got to work on his uh, his delivery and his yeah. uh, his presence. Mm-hmm. And he had a little bit of the the race to the finish line thing that that younger comics have. You know, get it out, get to the next one. No, don't leave any room. Don't leave any well, mannerisms. I'm, I've only got five to eight minutes, so I got to really you know shotgun this thing. Yeah. Well, you know what? Tell two less jokes and make them better. <laughs> So people remember you. Yep. But yeah, then Dave came up and just fucking murdered. Nice. It was really fun. <laughs> so good. Yep. I haven't been to a comedy club since we saw a Porter. That's the well, last time I went. I think Landau's coming your way. Well, if he is, hook me up. Let me see here. Let me go to the best <laughs> website. Let me go to the best website on the planet, <laughs> DaveLandau.com. Now, when I think of comedy, I think of DaveLandau.com. Right. Because that site is amazing. That's the home of the funny. That's right. No, sometimes I go there when I don't even want to see a comedian, just because it's such a goddamn funny place to go. Right. Uh, let's see. Muskegon, is that your? No, it's Michigan. Florida. Pennsylvania. We go to March. Boy, this website works fantastically. <laughs> It's amazing. Well, it's maybe he's not. Na- it's easy to navigate. It certainly is. The guy that built this is a fucking pro. Right. Uh. Well, maybe I'm wrong here. I thought there was like a, but I'm all the way out to May and there ain't anything. So whenever he comes back though, you know, if you keep an eye out at DaveLandau.com, <laughs> then I'll, um, whenever he comes to Chicago, I'll definitely take care of it. Well, when, when his uh, webmaster updates his website with new dates, uh, no, he does his own dates. Oh, oh, really? He does that on his own, huh? I will give him credit. I built him something so damn easy. He can do it himself. Wow. Look at that. Yipper. He, or at least I think he does himself. Maybe his wife does. I don't know, but well, it ain't me. Somebody's able to log in and do it. Yeah. The only thing I do is fix it when it's broke. Right. So yeah, good time last night. It was definitely fun. It was definitely fun hanging with John and Stephanie and Kelly and you know, we had a good time. Oh, you took the Kelster with you. I did. Nice. A little I double did. date. Look at yeah. double date. I don't know. I'd go that far. It was you, just four you, people there. You cute, you cute couples, you. Not really. It was just four <laughs> people there. Believe me, don't Dave wouldn't have been picking at us about being a couple. <laughs> Hey man, look at you fucking unhappy people. Right. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's date night. Yeah, it was kind of date night, Friday night. You know, everybody, it, it definitely was the whole room was guy and girl. Right. Was, there was definitely not like, I thought it would be more frat boyish, you know, with the Crowder crowd. Sure. Really wasn't. Like every, when I looked around the room, it was all. Here's a guy. Here's his girl. Here's a guy. Here's his girl. It was that they, thing. They were normal hetero couples. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's about what, what it was. <laughs> that's a comfortable position for me to be in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't bad. It was definitely comfortable. All right. Very good. All right. Well, I say that we, uh, take our first break. All right. And, uh, get, get to it. Okay, sounds good to me. Pitter patter, let's get at her. Pitter patter, let's go. <laughs> All right, I'll let you pick a tune. What what should we play? All right, I'm in the mood for heavy heavier music tonight. So okay, my choice is let's see, how about White Zombie, um, from Astro Creep from the Astro Creep release? How about if we go with El Fantasmo and the Chicken Run Blastorama? Wow, it's a long stupid title, but it's a killer yes, it song. Is. All right. Let me see here. Uh, oh, there it is. How about that? All right. Well, we're going to play a few tunes. We will come back and get rolling here. So right. here it is. It's a uh, white zombie exclusively here on your classic metal show. Thanks for checking out this episode of the classic metal show. Get all of our episodes uncensored at www.theclassicmetalshow.com. Join us weekly from 9 p.m. till 3 a.m. Eastern at www.cmsradio.net. Participate in the live chat room at www.chatandkill.com. Once again, thank you for checking out The Classic Metal Show with Neely and Chris. Hail and kill. Fuck you, pal. And hand job. 